Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Testing Unibytes. I'm, I'm your friend, Amgo Siktivel. And in this video, we're going to see a new playlist on GitHub Actions. It has been consistent request from, from all my dear followers uh, to create videos on GitHub Actions. I know this has been pending for a long time. So I thought this would be the right time to create it, right? Uh, so GitHub Actions is really, really cool. And most importantly, I will cover GitHub Actions in detail, like what are the, what is workflow, what are jobs, what, what are different steps, you know, I will cover everything in, you know, detail. But apart from that, right, I also give a lot of context with respect to test, test automation, right? GitHub Action is very, very huge. And, you know, whatever the videos that are available in the internet are predominantly covering in terms of development and other, uh, you know, build releases. But, but for us in test automation, how we can leverage this GitHub action in this automation is going to be the uh, agenda for me, All right? Good. So now uh, we will get started with a very simple uh, introduction in this video, how easy it for you to run a, a web test in GitHub actions, yeah? Previously, we were all using Jenkins predominantly, right? So, and we all know how hard it is to get your Jenkins setup up and running, right? It's pretty complex. At least it take one hour of time, right? So, uh, but how easy it is to do in GitHub Actions is going to be the agenda for this video, right? So I'm gonna give a little little bit of taste on how this looks like, right? So, so I have a project here that is Selenium APM test in GitHub Runners. You can also find this in my GitHub repository. I have all these workflows here. <laughs> I have also written a very detailed blog on how this works. Uh, I will also leave that in the description if you are super fast and you want to learn everything quickly instead of waiting for my videos, I'll also leave that block in, in the description. But but someone who wants to really learn from the videos and you know uh, you can learn from here. So this project you can poke into your repository. Um, I also have it in my IntelliJ workspace, right? So uh, let's first take a very simple example. Let's not complicate ourselves. Uh, if you notice in the project inside, the project there is a dot github folder and there is a folder called as workflows inside this right so whenever you create a workflow uh in, in jenkins we call it as a pipeline we call it as a job here we call it as a github workflow right because it it dictates how your you know works going to flow right so that that's why we call it as a workflow here and this is a very simple uh, uh workflow that i have taken for reference i have other workflows but this is one of the workflow that I am interested in now, right? If you notice, uh, the workflow will have a name on the top, and this is optional. Like you can have your own names, and even if you can, if you want to ignore without having a name, it's also fine. But but I recommend using a proper name, indicating what you're doing with the with the workflow, right? What that what does the workflow does? And now, if you notice, uh, uh, there is on, there is jobs. It's a very simple YAML file. But it looks a little jargon for someone who is seeing this for the first time. But before seeing all this, let's try to run this and see whether this is working, right? So we want to see how this works, right? Uh, after that, I'll come and explain what are all the different components involved here. You notice there is something called as um, APM test, web test, there is unit test. This is the workflow that I'm interested in. So what are the name that we have given here uh, will be displayed here. So the more meaningful name you have, it will be easy to identify the workflow that you want to work with, right? <clears throat> so, and there's, there is an option here, run workflow, and then I just simply click on that. So now if I reload this page, you can see a new workflow being triggered. That's it, it's pretty easy, right? And then when I clicked on this and it says, okay, cool. And it goes inside and it's trying to set up the job. It's, it's trying to check out the project. So it's checking out the project. It's setting up the Java versions that we need. And it's trying to run the unit test. Yeah. So it's it's downloading all the Maven dependencies that are needed, right? And at the end, it will also try to trigger the test, right? So if you notice, the test is complete. There is one test. So if you click on this particular arrow, we are trying to run the unit test. So I use Maven profiling here to pick the unit test. And if I go to the bottom of it, you know, I can see that after downloading all the big dependencies, 
uh, we can also optimize this dependency download uh, using cache at the later point of time. But for now, if you notice the total of test run is one and, and that is passed. There is no failures or skips. It's build is a success, right? That's how easy it is. And then it's cleaning up all the things that we have done after the execution of the job, right? So uh, we are not pretty, uh, you know, pretty much interested in these cleanup jobs, but it will take care of it automatically. So you don't have to do any efforts for this. So that's how easy it is, right? Now let's go to the code and see what it is, right? For example, uh, let's say I want to trigger this different events, right? Uh, we call it as different events in, in GitHub workflow, right? When I want to trigger it, it's more readable, right? Uh, when you want to trigger this workflow, whenever there is a push happening onto the main branch, I want to trigger this workflow. Pretty cool, very simple. Uh, and now also not just, just not just only during the push to main, but also sometimes when people try to create a new pull request, open a new pull request or synchronize the pull request or reopen a PR. So all these changes, I want to trigger this. Apart from that, I also need the option to manually trigger this. That's what we did now, right? So uh, we basically went there. Uh, we basically went here and then we manually triggered the test, right? So this work workflow dispatch even trigger. So this is the workflow dispatch even trigger. So we just clicked on this and run a flow. So this option will only be visible if you use this, right? We will cover this uh, trigger events, what are the different trigger events, uh, how we can make use of that, all that in detail. But for now, it's very, very simple, right? Uh, maybe I could have given a different name for this. Uh, I could have run unit test, whatever, right? That's a bit better name for this. Uh, but yeah. So uh, all your stuff, all your stuff workflow is composed of different jobs. In this particular workflow, there is only one job, right? There is no multiple jobs but you can have multiple jobs. When you have multiple jobs, all those jobs will be ran in parallel, okay? But here we have only one job and this job uh, has multiple steps, okay? First, what is that? First, we need to define where you want to run this because when you want to run something, you need a machine. Hey, Amazon, where bad this machine is coming from. In Jenkins, we will have a machine, uh, like we will have a main Jenkins node and then we have a node machine uh, people call it as master slave setup, but I try to avoid using the convention. So we will use that to run our test. But here, if you notice, this runs on Ubuntu latest. So GitHub by default provides uh, different machines to run our test. It supports Ubuntu, it supports Windows, it supports Mac. We will co cover that in detail. But for now, we are running it in a Ubuntu latest uh, machine, right? It's a, it's a Linux machine. And okay. Now we defined where we want to run the test. And uh, now wh what I want to do, what are the different things that I need, right? So if you want to run a very simple Java test, you need first the project itself, two, a machine, three, uh, a Java setup in it, and then you want to run the test, right? It's very easy, right? That's what we have defined here. First, I need the project, okay? Now, GitHub guys have already coded this, right? So you have a machine ready, now I am telling, hey, using this particular action, okay, you download the whole project, okay? So you, you have the project here in this repository, you download this inside the Ubuntu machine. That's very simple, right? That's it, it will take care of everything. Again, it, it uses some parameters, which we will cover in default, but now this is very simple. It just pulls the project. Two, now we want to set up Java, right? So now specifically I want Java 11. So I use another, action that is created by github guys so whatever that is starting with actions is basically created by github itself right so uh, they have provided a lot of reusable things because these are all things uh, checking out a project setting up java version or node version these are all very common things and and they have already created we don't have to write any code for this you just use it and then it take care of all these things right so now it will set up the java 11 version so once that is done if I want to run the unit test, so this is a step name. And in this step, what I want to do, I want to run the unit test using this command, right? It's just a, if you open a terminal and we run it, it basically uh, runs the profile unit test. If you go to the pom.xml, uh, I have the profile here that is unit test. If somebody is calling this profile unit test, 
to trigger the unit test.xml file. And if you go to the unit test.xml file, I internally refer this to the demo test where I'm test test unit test in GitHub runner. I, I'm asserting uh, the actual one with the expected one. So it's a pretty simple unit test just for the demo. So it's it's how easy it is, right? Let's say Amudan, this is a very simple unit test, but what about web test? I want to run a Selenium test here in the GitHub Actions. And it's very simple as well. For example, I want to run my web test in GitHub Runner. So if you notice, I just want change here. Uh, if you want to run the test, we need the browser, right? But what I'm doing here is I'm I'm spinning up the Selenium. Okay, you can also run your test in local. So so this Ubuntu latest will have the Chrome in it. It, it has a lot of software installed by default. It has Android emulators, everything there, right? <clears throat> but in my case, I want to run my test in Selenium. Okay, so I I used this step. Okay, if you notice, this uses an action that is not starting with actions, which means it was created by someone and and pushed it to the GitHub marketplace. So this is not an official one, but it is uploaded to the marketplace. You can still use it, right? So so I'm telling I want to have a Chrome browser with 10 different parallel instances. And I want to have the latest version of Chrome that is available in the market. So that's how it is. And then once the Serenoid is up and running, I also want to check out the project and I want to run the command maven clean test pweb. So it basically triggers a test uh, inside the web package. So if you notice, so this is the test, right? So I'm still in Chrome. I don't, I want to see the live execution, but anyways, we are not going to see it. So I can also remove it or I can set this to false, whatever, right? I want to, you know, when your Selenide is up and running, it, it'll it be up and running on local post double four double four. So it launches Google. We are getting the title and we are sleeping for 10 seconds and then we are quitting it, right? So this is a very simple test. Let's go and figure this here. Run web test and run the workflow. So now just read out the page. So if you go here, you basically, so okay, click on this, it's starting the job. See the, uh, one of the thing is all these runners are provided by GitHub by default. But if you also want to have your own machine to be used in the, in the GitHub actions, then you can also do that. So yeah, now this is spinning up the Selenite for me. I guess if you're not aware of Selenite, it's a, it's a customized Selenium hub, uh, Selenium grid setup, but it's very optimized and very effective. So I have not been using Selenium grid for a very long time. Uh, Selenoid is is super cool and it's awesome. So I've been using Selenoid for all my requirements. No. Now once this, set, so that's it, test is completed. So once the Selenoid server is up and running, okay, you notice here, it, it uses Docker, the version, all this important information it's giving and it's downloading the Chrome and uh, no, everything is done. Once that done, it's pulling out the project from, from our repository and then it's trying to run the test that we want to run. So once this is triggered, it downloads all the Maven dependencies and the test is a pass here. So that's how cool it is. So guys, so now I have given you a little bit taste on how this GitHub workflow works and how easy it is to use it in our automation space. But don't worry if you don't understand some part of it because I'm going to dive deep into all these different things. For example, what are the different types of events trigger? What is a job? How can you run multiple jobs parallelly? Uh, what is a build? Uh, what is the steps? Uh, what is this? What is the different parameters for to do actions? Uh, how we can run it in different machine? Let's say I want to run my unit test on all different machines, right? Ubuntu, Windows, Mac OS. I want to run it on all different machines, or I want to run it on Docker image. So you can you have a lot of liberty to do that. So I will cover all of them and different steps. What are the different steps possible? Um, or what how to use multi line uh, run commands? So there are different intricate details that I want to cover as part of this particular playlist. So keep watching this space. Uh, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. I will see you guys in another great video. Uh, until then, Tata bye bye from Mamudan. See you. Bye bye guys.